quite interesting. This is an article from the BBC, right? Um, where they're trying to encourage people to do a career outside of the arts, which is really, really funny. Um, which kind of um, explains a lot of the things that I've been kind of seeing in general in the scene, right? Because I think when I first got involved in the scene, I say the, the creative art scene, wherever it may be in London, um, it mostly centered around electronic music, uh, fashion, photography, and maybe blogging, right? That was when blogs were big. Um, I can think of someone like Hyper Frank or something, you know, being a big blogger at the back of the day, right? Bullshit opinions, don't get me wrong, but, you know, she was a big blogger. So, in the grime sort of world, right? Do you remember when she tried to cancel Bushkin because of his misogyny, you know, because of his... <laughs> or homophobia or something, like... That was a weird hill to die on, man, <laughs> like... Oh, bless that girl. But anyway, let's continue, right? Um, So, that was the kind of fields to get involved in, right? But obviously, because they're because all those fields are kind of you know, nonsense jobs, right? They're things that are, they're non-accredited. You kind of make them out, you kind of invent them out of the urethra, right? You just kind of, you know, if you say you've got a magazine, you've got it, right? It's that there's no real kind of a hard way to kind of, you know, numbers you've got to sell. You can just make one in your room and it's a magazine, right? So that's it. So because of that, the, the low barrier of entry means that there's a lot of people getting involved. There's a lot less resources going on. Not, not resources, there's a lot less money going around, right? There's only so many magazines you can buy. They say we pay people you can support artists wise, so you know there's a small pool there. But obviously the top of the top get all the money, the ones in the middle get some and the ones at the bottom get nothing. So it, it works out it works the way most industries work. But obviously it's just oversubscribed. If you look at the amount of people that go to creative universities like the UAL or the U, U, yeah, UAL, um you see the amount of people that come out and get into those kind of lucrative jobs in the entertainment industry, it's not a lot, especially when most of the people try to only get specific types of job in the entertainment industry for the most part, right? If we look at if we look at music for example, there might not be a lot of there might not be there might not be a lot of space for you to become the next Justin Bieber, but there's a lot of room for you to become the next Scooter Braun. But nobody wants to be the next Scooter Braun. People just want to be Justin Bieber, right? Everyone wants to be in front of the camera and wants to be behind the camera. But there's probably more chance of you making it being the manager, being the agent, being the number two, being the I don't know, the bus boy, the photocopy person, the coffee getter, than there is being a Justin Bieber. You obviously work your way up to it maybe over time, but as an entry wise, that's the easy way to do it. But most people when they're going to well, most people when they're going to X Factor and stuff, they're wanting to become the person in the front of the mic, which you know it's harder to do because it's oversubscribed, as I said before. So the issue isn't necessarily that there's no jobs in the industry. The issue is that most kids only focus on the lucrative ones. So everyone wants to be a stylist in London, everyone wants to be a photographer, everyone wants to have their own magazine, no one wants to be the stylist stylist assistant, no one wants to be a photographer assistant, no one no one wants to be the runner or the copywriter of the magazine, everyone wants to have their head, their name on the top of the masthead, right? And it's now hurting the youth chances of career aspiration or career uh projection in life. And I've kind of seen it. I've I've been aware of it because I know that in London that's one thing that kind of annoyed me about the scene is that everyone tended, everyone I met in the scene or met just around, always and for some reason, everyone had some kind of cool group. Everyone had a cool group, like some sort of hipsters group they had also to touch with. All their friends happened to have interesting jobs. Do you remember there was a period in time where people were kind of sharing the success of their friends and just saying, I'm so proud of my friend, my friend, my friend, I'm proud, I'm proud, I'm proud. Just really corny. And it really annoyed me because I was thinking, it, do, is it, do all your friends happen to have some sort of cool entertainment career driven success story? Don't you don't have any friends that are just that are just, you know, working a nine to five and that you're proud of as well, or that are parents or whatever. All your friends happen to have some cool exhibition, some cool deal they signed. Everything is cool. There's no like normal thing that your friends have done. No, nothing at all. It just happens to be all your friends are cool. And it's not because of that. Obviously, they've kind of cultivated their friendship group to include people who have clout, who have positions. Fair enough. But Obviously, this kind of way of think, doing things is only beneficial to a small minority, but for the majority, they're going to suffer. And this is a t- article from BBC kind of lays it out. Warning over youth career aspirations, reality check, disconnect, right? This is from the BBC. It says the following. Uh, the career hopes and the dreams of young people in the UK are at the odds with the types of jobs available, study warns. Research by the Charity of Education and Employers suggests that five times as many 17 to 18 years in the UK want to work in art, culture, and entertainment. Um, uh, as there are jobs available, and this disconnect means for far too many destined to disappoint. Oh, hold on, let me read that again. Research by the charity education employers suggests that five times as many 70 to 18 year olds in the UK want to work in art, culture, entertainment, and sport as there are jobs available. So, of course, there's five times more people doing okay. That's not good. The report disconnected the career aspirations and jobs in the UK is based on the survey of 7,000 teenagers. Also, using data from the Office of National Statistics, the charity found the greatest ex- ex- success, excess or aspiration related to jobs in art and, and culture, entertainment, and sport 
where five times many 17 18 year olds want to work uh 56 15.6 percent compared to the projected demand of the economy which is 3.3 bloody hell it's, it's, that's frightening isn't it for the most of those 51 percent, this was the only sector which they expressed an interest in so that's the only thing because that's the only thing really that's the only area you hear kids say they really want to work in they're, they're specific about the industry those kind of areas i guess because for the most part most people fall into other careers as a kind of second option as a kind of fail safe as a plan b but they have the real desires to become you know the next david beckham let's say for instance then over the, over the course of time you know the world you know the world is a great feedback mechanism you know you put stuff out there you go and do stuff and the world will tell you where your position is where you kind of sit on the totem pole and you, if you kept getting feedback that you're not good at that thing you have to kind of re- reverse action you kind of have to kind of um course correct and kind of go in another direction of course if you continue doing it you're insane that famous einstein quote but for the most part we're aware as humans when something isn't going the way we intend it to go and we then kind of pivot to another another thing so yeah so maybe there is something to be said for pursuing a creative endeavor even if you know you're not going to be one of the one percent that's going to succeed in it just to say that you've done it and also to kind of give you the life experience points that you need in order to then segue that experience to other things because i imagine if you try to pursue a uh a career in music and you're marketing yourself online doing social media paid social uh you know running ads all that sort of stuff that could eventually help you when you then decide you know what maybe the pop star thing isn't for me let me go get a job in a marketing agency but then when you come in you're at a high level you're a high higher level of experience because you've actually done the work in real life for yourself right you've actually run campaigns and stuff you've you know uh uh waste the time of a copy and making sure things are correct so that you can get the right kind of engagement like you've done more than the person coming out of college who studied marketing so maybe there is some kind of benefit to it i don't know and it continues here the analysis suggests that the greatest shortfall of interest is in accommodation and in catering which all which needs almost seven times as many students that express their interest so they need more people to come in basically and work which is you could definitely see it because any restaurant or hotel you go in you, you see it just you know the workforce is primarily made up of people from other countries not people that are native from here so obviously Obviously, there's a disconnect there with people how they grow up and how what jobs they associate themselves with being successful, which is a shame, really, because there's nothing unsuccessful about earning a wage, all right, about earning a living, about supporting your family, or about supporting yourself. There's nothing unsuccessful about it. The fact that you don't get to like go to a Paris Fashion Week doesn't mean you're not doing bits. Do you know what I mean? Um, it also says wholesale and retail trade similarly sees a very large short, forty point six percent expressing. A, the, the report says young people's aspirations are set early, as young as seven and do not change even over time to meet demand. And this consistency of young people's creative choices, creative choices, sorry, throughout this teenage years and their frustrations and wasted energy it produces will need significant effort to resolve. 100% agree with that one. Um, I think this might be a kind of an unintended consequence of burnout culture as well, you know. I think part of the reason why people get burned out in kind of the creative pursuits is because they don't really have any context of what it means to actually work hard. I think for the most part, I think the people that think they work hard don't work hard enough. Like, oh, I've got burnout, all this stuff. It comes from the idea of like, this. you're suddenly doing something that you love. You're suddenly pouring all your efforts into it and it's taking a lot out of you. And then you don't really associate with, because I think people have this idea once you do something you love, you're not going to be working hard. Well, no, you actually will work more because you're now doing something that you don't mind doing every single day of the week, every waking moment. You have to come to a point where you have to kind of pull yourself back a bit. Um, so maybe that disconnect with kind of your career achievements and what you can and cannot do and what's kind of possible is somehow kind of leading into this. So when people pop on social or pop on YouTube and they have to do it and they're suddenly doing a lot and working all hours of the day and they get burned out, it kind of is an indication that they weren't necessarily aware of what really it takes to kind of be successful in the industry that they're in. So there is that kind of dis- uh, dis- dis- disconnect with kind of the job that they're kind of going for, right? Um, there is, which I'd imagine that, I'd imagine, you know, being a professional footballer is the same thing, right? There is this idea that, okay, it's easier because you get to work with the best fitness coaches and the best training facilities in the world, right? You get all the equipment given to you, you don't have to kind of expense anything, cool, amazing, but there's also a lot of more discipline, a lot more sacrifice involved, right? You're in your you're in your peak years of kind of living, right? Age between, I'd say, like 18 to 30 to 40, and you're committing to being a sportsman, which means you're going to miss out on a lot of festivals, you're going to miss out on a lot of holidays, a lot of weddings, um a lot of birthdays like you're gonna miss out on a lot of stuff that if, if that's important to you in your friendship group and your friends and stuff that's gonna be really hurt it's gonna really hurt you to miss out all these things right 
but you're doing it in order to kind of pursue this dream that you have, right? Which is quite singular, really, for the most part, because, you know, being a footballer doesn't really benefit anyone until it benefits them, right? Um, it's really something you're pursuing in your own. No one's going to come and watch your Sunday league games. Everyone's only going to give int- and everyone's only going to give, give a shit once you pop and you become a Premier League football, football star on your own TV. That's, that's the fact of it, right? Um, so that can be a bit disconcerting. Anyway, let's continue here. Uh, da, da, da. And uh, what was it said? Here? So, and this con- and this consistency of young people's career choices throughout their teenage years and their frustrations, it will need to a significant effort to resolve. The research says young people' career aspirations need to be engaged with, and it's necessary to cons- constructively challenged. It's definitely true. <laughs> if someone tells you they're a stylist, you have to ask them why. Like, why do you need to be a stylist? Like, honestly, like, don't we have enough stylists out there in the world? Can you not do something else? Do you have to be a designer? Do you have to be the one running at the end of the runway and celebrating and clapping everybody and, you know, waxing your ego? Or can you do something else in fashion? Do, do you need to make another zine? Do we have enough paper wasted now? Like, honest question needs to be asked. Because I don't think we need any more of those things, personally. It says, a concerted effort is needed to address it when it causes an aspiration, reality disconnect, and calls for this. Three-step plan. Significant expansion of career-related learning in primary school. 100% agree with that. There needs to be more. Career that needs to be a thing as well. I don't know if you're doing it anymore, but that was really informative the chance of you because you only it was really informative in that number one career day in the uk is mostly when you're like a year 10 for those of you who don't know year, yeah i think it's year 10 year 11 uh they give you a work experience thing where for two weeks you get positioned in some i don't know you fill out a form you say that you say the places of interest that you're interested in they try to fit you with those jobs that kind of interested. sometimes you don't get anything you're, you're interested in at all sometimes you do get one on the money and i got to work in like a electronic cam electronic shop somewhere in the middle of Tottenham Court road if you're familiar with Tottenham Court road you know there's all these little kind of hood sort of like camera shops that have like cameras in their shelves that are all dusty and stuff and all that malarkey right so i got to work there for two weeks and it was probably one of the best experiences of my life and one of the worst because obviously it got to show you what you don't want to do and also got to show you what actual working a real life job is about because there is that time when you're in school where you can kind of get a little bit cocky and think oh, no, i don't need school man i know what i'm doing i'm wasting my time here and then um i could just go and work and make money right that was a thing that i remember we were doing back in the day just work get money buy a car you know what i mean just keep it moving but then when you go and work an actual job, you're like, oh, no, no, no. This school thing is actually the best time of my life. Like, I, I have no responsibilities. I get fed and washed every single day. Uh, you know, a family that loves me. Do you know what I mean? It's just like, it's just the most easiest time to do when you're a kid. But the moment you become an adult, you have bills to pay and stuff. It, it's a whole different game. Um, so, yeah, that career day was really informative. And again, it got to put your dreams perspective too. Because if you go and do a work experience for two weeks and you come back hating that job, it can maybe drive you to really make a go at this kind of aspiration you have to become a singer, right? It can kind of push you because you you know what's on the other side of the rainbow. You know what's, you, you know what's on the other side of that failure. You know it. You open that door and you have to work in an underground electronic music store in the middle of Tottenham Road that gets absolutely no business. I don't know how those places survive as well. But the guy was really cool there that worked with the manager. I remember him telling me like, now you know what you don't want to do, right? Like this is like this is a job for you. You're quite a smart guy. I can see you're a smart kid and stuff. You know what you're doing. Like don't don't fuck up your studies and end up in a place like this. Because I'm doing this because I have to support. Maybe to kind of a Somali and do the older guys. And look, I don't I don't have any qualifications that you you guys in the UK here notice or respect or how to work this job just to kind of support my family. But that's the reason why I'm doing it. You know what I mean? But you don't you have the luxury of living here, being born here. You know, growing up in this education system, don't waste it. And I think that is a very important lesson. Even if, again, if you, if you do have lofty ambitions for yourself, I think it's it's you have to also be tethered to reality you have to kind of suspend belief because you have to, have to become a to have any kind of dreams of making it an entertainment sports or or whatever or culture you have to be a little bit delusional right because the likelihood of you making it is nil to none right but you have that's why you get into it you want to you know entertain the idea that you can make it but you also have to be tethered to some kind of reality and know that okay cool if i don't make it this is the reality of my situation doing these kind of jobs right um Civic expansion of career learning needs to be introduced to here. More support for career guidance in secondary schools, 100% agree, and better labour market information for young people, 100% true. Uh, the report says from age 7, we need to ensure that children get to meet a range of people from different backgrounds and doing different jobs, 100% true. That one, uh, st- people who can help bring uh, learning to life, show them how the subjects they are studying are related to relevant to their futures. We need to stop children ruling out options because they believe implicitly or explicitly that their future career choices are limited by their gender, ethnicity, or so or socioeconomic background. This is not our. This is not providing our career advice in primary schools, but breaking down barriers, broadening horizons, and raising aspirations, giving children a wide range of experiences of the world, including the world of work. A spokesman for the Department of Work and Pension said, young people are rarely short of ambition and we want them to have skills and direction to, to match. As the report suggests, early career advice can help people 
young people set out the right path to the job that it channels their interest and unlocks their potential. That's why we committed to career guide leaders and have announced new funding for job centers to provide uh, advice for more schools across the country. Yeah, but job centers are really a cool thing to do. I don't think kids want to go to job centers to find this kind of thing. These need to be introduced in school. Uh, but yeah, really cool information. I think, again, I've seen it myself. I think there has been a prevalence. I think now there's a change somewhat, but I remember there was an era where it just felt a little bit uncomfortable, the fact that I was meeting so many young people, especially the young ones are coming into the scene, who were hell-bent on just doing the same, who were hell-bent on trying to get the same jobs that my generation was trying to get or trying to get involved in. And there's only so many of them that go around, right? Like, I think of the, the fucking... The pinnacle job at that time when I was coming into it was trying to be the marketing energy lead at Nike, right? Or the Nike energy marketing lead or whatever, right? Be involved in that kind of thing, like the cool guy job. Those kind of jobs are nearly impossible to get because if you get it on paper, it's a perfect job, right? If you love Nike, you love trainers, and you get to kind of seed people uh, new designs and you kind of get to do activations and stuff, it's the perfect job for a person to have that involved in that industry. So that means that person is never going to leave, right? Or someone else is going to get grandfathered in or they're going to go for friends and family first over kind of external job external job application. So to kind of have that goal in mind is a little bit, oof, do you know what I mean? To have that specific goal is a bit hard, do you know what I mean? To kind of do that. Whereas if you said, I want to work in marketing in general, I want to work in the entertainment industry in general, you could potentially get a job working in marketing for a record label, a drinks company, uh, beverage company right there's no, all there's no man but the fact that people are coming into it wanting to be lead designer of this place of that brand working that industry stylist for this magazine when there's only so many of those jobs around the people that have them don't want to let them go the industry around those jobs is very um gatekeeperish right you have to kiss a lot of hands you have to really um you know sell your sell your soul in a way like really get mucky in the waters of begging and pleading which is something that I don't never wanted to do, and I'm sure a lot of people don't want to do either. But you have to really question your dignity or really put your dignity on the line to kind of get those kind of jobs. And if you're not willing to do that, then you just have to get out of the game, um, unfortunately. So I'm, I'm happy to see these kind of reports being put out there. Hopefully, some of the actions will be implemented into society so that we can kind of see a bit of a difference in the way people approach their jobs. Because nowadays, I think it's all a bit too samey, man. And there's so much money out there to be made in other places. But, you know, what do I know?